Hi, I'm Vincent, Program Manager on Microsoft Graph, and I'm here with Elise. Hi, I'm Elise. I'm a Program Manager on the Microsoft Graph team. And together, we'll see what's new with Microsoft Graph. And starting with the agenda, we have a lot of content for you. We have uh, a lot of new APIs that are available in Microsoft Graph. And while we are showing you all those new APIs and all those new scenarios, we'll be featuring a lot of platform broad investments that we've been making as well. Things like Microsoft Graph Partial or the new Graph Explorer or Postman Collections or the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. But before we begin, um, let me talk to you about MicrosoftGraph.UserVoice.com. This is the place for you to provide all your feedback and your ideas about things you would like to see in Microsoft Graph. And we listen a lot to that feedback. So please, please, please continue creating new ideas there, upvote existing ideas. And those ideas are the basis of what we use to make sure that we deliver value to you uh, and that you have new APIs that you can use. Speaking of which, a consistent uh, ask we've seen is to make sure that Microsoft Graph was at parity with Azure AD Graph. Well, at the time of our recording, we're currently deploying the last missing APIs about service principles. Now, any new application that you're developing should be on Microsoft Graph, and you should be looking at migrating your existing applications to Microsoft Graph from Azure AD Graph. Not only you'll get a single endpoints, more APIs, and more improvements, but this is also the place where we do all the innovations, we do all the improvements, and you get new things like change notifications or improve query capabilities. And if you know, want to know more about how to migrate from Azure AD Graph to Microsoft Graph, you can follow the link on the screen. Speaking of which, let us begin by exploring new APIs in Identity and Access. But before we dive into APIs, I'd like to share with you a video from LumaGate. LumaGate is a strategic Microsoft partner with multiple offerings in the Azure Marketplace. They specialize in secure modern apps and they were a first mover in the chatbot space. When choosing a global cloud platform, they had very specific criteria that would be important for any development team aiming for similar success. Let's hear their story. We wanted to share a bit of our journey in building the world's first AI-powered chatbot for enhancing identity, endpoint, and security management in the Microsoft Cloud. I am Pete Zerger. I'm a Microsoft MVP and partner at Lumigate, where I am product owner for Simon. I am Wes Prosbergen, and I am a former Microsoft Security Global Black Belt and a development lead for Simon. As a first mover, we had some big decisions to make, and we knew we needed a global cloud provider with data-rich, secure APIs we could grow with for the long term. And for us, the choice was clear. Microsoft Azure and the Microsoft Graph. And thanks to the Microsoft Graph, Simon enables a user to activate their privileged identity profile in Azure AD directly from Microsoft Teams. And for Azure AD identities and Intune managed endpoints, we can actually provide a more complete picture of device state in a single screen than you'll find anywhere on even two screens in the native Azure portal. With the Microsoft Graph, we can bring a big experience to small screens. In a single screen, we can show rich user and device data from Microsoft Intune and Defender ATP or Office 365 or even Azure AD. In fact, one thing every LumaGate software solution has in common is our reliance on the Microsoft Graph. To quote one of our developers, when it comes to Azure, life without the Microsoft Graph would be like peanut butter without jelly. For us, it's about putting user experience and security front and center in a modern approach to software that makes life better for our customers. And it wouldn't be possible without the Microsoft Graph. Thank you, LumaGate. For the next few demonstrations, I'll be uh, using the new Microsoft Graph PowerShell module. This new PowerShell module allows you to script and automate anything you could do on the Microsoft Graph using PowerShell. Of course, you could also integrate the new APIs I'm be demonstrating using our SDKs into your applications. The first demo, I'll be showing how you can configure a user's sign-in phone number with a Microsoft Graph PowerShell. Here is my PowerShell console, 
and I've already loaded the Microsoft Graph PowerShell module. So here I'll go ahead and run my PowerShell script. The first thing that's going to happen is the PowerShell uh, module is going to need to authenticate against Microsoft Graph to do any operation. Because again, any data exposed from Microsoft Graph is always secured uh, using authentication and authorization. So it's giving me this link here that I will use in my browser, microsoft.com slash device login. And then it's also giving me this code here. It is using the device code flow that I'll be entering as the web page is prompting me. After that, I'll be choosing the account I want to use in my PowerShell session. Here, my tenant administrator. And that's it. Uh, here, my PowerShell session is ready to go. I can close this window. So I'll go back to the PowerShell uh, window. The first thing this script is going to ask me is which user do I want to configure the, the phone sign-in information for? So here, I have a user ready to go that I put as a comment in my PowerShell script that I'm going to paste here. The next thing my script is going to ask me is which phone number I want to use to sign in for this user. So here I'm going to be typing my phone number. So the first step or the first action that this script executes is listing current sign-in methods. And this user, besides the password sign-in, doesn't have any sign-in method configured. So I'll press Enter to continue. For this next step, what is going to happen is that the script will set up the new sign-in method, our phone, with our phone number for the current user. And then it will uh, ex ex exit. So if we go over to the script to see how that works, here you can see that I have a first line, connect dash graph with dash scopes, and I pass in the scopes. This allows me to authenticate to Microsoft Graph with scopes that are required further down below to execute my script. Or you could also read those as permissions. Here I have plain PowerShell asking for the email address, asking for the phone number. And here my first graph, a Microsoft Graph PowerShell commandlet is uh, to list all the uh, current uh, of authentication phones that are configured for the current user with get dash mg user authentication phone method here. Um, and then the next uh, step I have here, or commandlet I'm using here, is new dash mg user authentication phone method. This commandlet allows me to set up a new authentication method for the current user. Authentication methods APIs are in public preview today. Not only are you able to manage phone authentication methods as we've seen with PowerShell, but you also can manage today password authentication methods, even reset the password for a specific user. And we have more authentication methods coming soon to those APIs. If you want to know more about authentication method APIs, please follow the link on the screen. Once you've made sure that your users are securely authenticating to Microsoft 365 applications, another thing you might want to do as part of their onboarding is make sure that they are members of the groups they need to be members of. We have two new APIs for that coming soon. The first one being group membership APIs. Those APIs allow you to define membership rules on groups that will automatically add or remove any users depending on their profile properties. Alternatively, what you can use is the new group memberships request APIs. These APIs allow users to request access to a specific group and group owners to review that access request and either approve or reject it. Along the lines of making sure that users have access to the resources they need to have access to, we're announcing in public preview today the unified RBAC APIs. Those new APIs allow you to define role definitions as well as assign those role definitions consistently across the different services uh, available in Microsoft 365. Today, those APIs support directory and device management from Intune, and more services will come soon. You can find out more about uh, unified RBAC APIs uh, through the link displayed on the screen. For my next demonstration, I'll be configuring conditional access policies with Microsoft Graph PowerShell and our new publicly available APIs. As always, the first thing that is going to be uh, asking is for me to authenticate before I can do anything. So for that, I'll switch to the browser here, go to microsoft.com slash device login, and then copy the code that's given to me here. 
After that, I'll select my account. And that's it. I can go back to my PowerShell console. So the first thing that my script is doing here is listing out current conditional access policies. And I don't have any, so this is why nothing is showing up here. Then I'll be creating my new conditional access policy and listing out existing conditional access policies. And you can see that my new uh, conditional access policy here is showing up. And lastly, I'll exit my script here. So if we go to the partial script itself, you'll see that the first line I have here allows me to connect to Microsoft Graph with the required scope for my next steps. Then I'll be listing out the existing conditional access policies. And at the time, I didn't have any. This is why it was not showing any conditional access policy. After that, I'll be creating my new conditional access policy. This specific access policy will make sure that any user trying to access Exchange Online will first go through two rounds of authentications before we can do so. After that, I'm listing out my conditional access policies again and then disconnecting from my partial session. If we go back to the browser to see what it does in effect, if I go to Outlook, dot office.com here and log in with my user a test user here you'll see that before i can access exchange now i'll be requested to use a phone sign in authentication method and by the way this phone sign in authentication method is the same that we have configured all year using microsoft graph partial so you can see that using microsoft graph partial we've been able to do two things first enable the phone authentication sign in method for a user and configure a specific phone number and second configure conditional access policies to make sure that um, we are accessing exchange uh, securely and that conditional access policy is taking advantage advantage of a previous setting we've set uh, before. So here I'll be entering the code. And you can see that now I have access to Exchange Online as uh, any user would. For this next demonstration, I'll be using the new Microsoft Graph Explorer. We're proud to announce that we're releasing publicly a new version of our Microsoft Graph Explorer with lots of improvements for you to take advantage of. And during this demonstration, I'll be showing you new and improved query capabilities for directory objects that are currently in public preview. So with this first request here, we have two things happening. The first one is we are filtering on a property and we're using the start with operator here. Um, previously, the start with operator was not supported for a number of properties on users or groups objects or any other directory objects. So this is one of the new improved query capability uh, we have here. And second, we are using the dollar count capability. So here, all together, what is going to happen is I'm going to count all the users that belong to the Office 18, uh, the Office location 18. Uh, this was previously a request that was not supported. In order to get that result here, one thing I have to add is a request header. I must specify the consistency level to eventual as a request header for those queries to work. The next query I wanted to show you is the following here. And a number of things are happening. The first thing is uh, we are using our dollar account capability that will append here the count of objects with a response payload. The second thing here is that we are uh, selecting uh, different properties. This is always a good thing to do to make sure that you're only retrieving the properties you need, optimizing performance and user experience. That was already supported before. The third thing that's happening here is I'm ordering the results I'm getting by their display name. And the ordering is happening on the server side, not on the client side. So Microsoft Graph is doing the work of making sure that the results you're getting here are ordered by a display name in this case. And lastly, I'm using the new dollar search query capability to search in the display name any display name containing Quim. Why didn't I use a filter instead with dollar filter contains Quinn? Well, that's because dollar search will do more things than a simple filter. 
it will uh, abstract for spaces, hyphens, and a number of special characters. It will also make sure that casing is not in the way and other things like that. This is why I'm using search here rather than dollar filter, but both would have been supported. The third request I want to show you for this, for this demonstration is the following one. So here we have a number of things happening as well. First, I'm querying a group this time, not the users. And for that specific group, I'm looking at the transitive members. So that will not only be the direct members of a group, but the members of the members of the members of groups that might be a member um, of this group. Then what I'm doing here is I'm doing an OData cast. Groups might have members that are users, that are applications, or other things. But in this specific case, I'm telling to graph, hey, I'm only interested in uh, users and nothing else. After that, I'm uh, specifying that I want the count to be returned. I'm selecting the properties I want to select. I'm searching like I did before. And I'm ordering the result set back by uh, the display name like I did in the previous query. But keep in mind that the result of users that's returned here are only the users that are members of, of this specific group. And you have support for all those query capabilities within the navigation properties that could be uh, members, owners, or uh, other navigation properties. If you want to know more about new and improved query capabilities in Microsoft Graph directory objects, you can check out the blog post that will be published soon after the session. So now that we've seen all the latest APIs that are available around identity and access and that you can keep your organization secure at scale thanks to Microsoft Graph and Microsoft Graph PowerShell, I'll hand it to Elise so she can tell us more about all the great scenarios around communication, collaboration, and productivity. Back to you, Elise. Thanks, Vincent. Thanks, Vincent. So now that we've covered new ways to manage who and what has access to your organization's data, I'm going to highlight some of the new features and APIs that we have that will enable you to do more with this data and to maximize your productivity. So let's start with users. Users are at the center of all the data on Microsoft Graph, and we're excited to show you some new APIs that allow you to access and develop with richer user data. So the Profile API is currently in preview, and it allows you to add and retrieve descriptive properties such as languages, skills, education, and more for a person. And then these properties are surfaced in shared people experiences across Microsoft 365. So another new API we have is the new presence API, which allows you to get information about a user's Microsoft Teams presence. Um, so the availability will give you the presence information for a user, such as if they're available, away, or busy, and then the activity will provide additional information, such as if they're in a meeting or out of office. So I'm going to show you an example of how you can easily leverage this data in your own applications using the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So the Microsoft Graph Toolkit is a collection of web components powered by Microsoft Graph. And the toolkit provides components for some of the most common patterns that we see built using Microsoft Graph data, such as user logins, people pickers, or agenda views. And the toolkit components do all of the hard work to authenticate a user and then call the right APIs with the correct set of permissions. Um, so you can easily drop these experiences into your own application with just one to two lines of code. So on the left, I have the original person card from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit that is generally available right now. It has some very basic information about the signed in user, such as their name, their photo, and some contact information. And then on this right side, I'm actually showing a preview of the revamped person card component that leverages the new presence and profile APIs. So you can see the person card now has an icon that shows Megan's presence. And when Megan's availability is changed on Teams, the person card updates to match this. You can also see on this tab that there's additional profile information about Megan now such as the languages she speaks, her skills, her work experience, and a lot more. And this data is coming from the new profile API. So to show you how easy it is to add this person card experience to your own application, I'm going to flip to my code. Um, you can see here I have a very basic HTML page, and I'm using the Toolkit MSOP provider here to handle all of my authentication. And now in my HTML, I just have one line that adds the person card component, which is all of the work behind the scenes to call the APIs and render the data. 
So now I'm going to show you what's new in Sites. One of the features that we've seen highly requested is the ability to enumerate all SharePoint site collections in Tenant. We've heard from developers that not having a reliable way to discover site collections is a major pain point, and developers are required to create their own workarounds using search and indexing when building apps that need to be configured to run against all site collections. So I'm excited to announce that we now have generally available the capability to enumerate all site collections in a tenant on the v 1.0s slash sites endpoint. To show you this new capability, I'm going to use the Microsoft Graph Postman collection, which is another great way to explore the Microsoft Graph APIs, especially when you're building app-only scenarios that don't have a signed-in user present. So you can see how to download and set up the collection on our docs here. And I've already registered my application in the Azure portal, and I've set up my environment here with my client ID and tenant ID, as well as my client secret, which I'm not going to show. So I'm going to run the get app only access token request. And this is going to give me an access token that allows me to make requests to get data from Microsoft Graph. Now to get the enumeration of all the SharePoint site collections in my tenant, I'm going to use the get site sample in the SharePoint folder. And here I'm just making a get request to the v1.0 slash sites endpoint. And the access token I just requested is already populated. So when I hit send, I'm returned a list of all the site collections in my tenant. So this basic capability to return the list of sites is generally available already on the v1.0 endpoint. And webhooks and delta queries will also be available soon to make this feature even more powerful. Next, I'm going to talk about places. So we've also received a lot of user voice requests around increased support for meeting rooms or lo physical locations in your organization. And we're excited to announce the general availability of the new Places API. So the Places API gives you access to rich detail on places such as rooms or room lists and replace the existing find rooms and find room lists functions that are currently in beta. Now I'm going to switch to Graph Explorer to show you what data this new API makes available. Here in Graph Explorer, I'm making a get request to the v1.0 slash places slash microsoft.graph.room endpoint, which gives me a list of all the rooms in my tenant. Each room has metadata on its locations, which includes the room's address, the geographical coordinates, um, as well as information on the capacity of the room and what kind of AV equipment is available. So with all this additional data, you can imagine building a whole new set of experiences around places in your organization, such as providing users with navigational information to get to a meeting with the most efficient route, or suggesting rooms that have the right capacity and AV equipment for an important presentation. So next, I'm going to talk about what's new in tasks. With the current merging of work and home for most of us, it's becoming increasingly challenging, but important to stay organized and focused. And Microsoft To-Do helps you manage your personal tasks. And I'm excited to show you a preview of the new To-Do API that is coming soon on Microsoft Graph. So the To-Do API will be an upgrade from the current Outlook Tasks API in beta and will allow you to pull in and manage all of your personal tasks in one place. Now, a lot of the previous demos that we've shown so far um, show great examples of how you can use Microsoft Graph in enterprise scenarios. But Microsoft Graph is also great for building consumer apps. So I'm going to show you an example of how you can use the to-do APIs to make your weekly grocery shopping more efficient. A common way to use to-do is to store your grocery shopping list for the week, and you can share this list with people in your family so that you manage just one shared list among multiple people. So here in my to-do, you can see that I have a bunch of items that I need to get for this week. Now this is Contosa Foods, which is an application that helps you manage and make your grocery shopping more efficient that's built with the new to-do APIs and the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So when I sign into Contosa Foods, the app is going to call the to-do API to get my shopping list and show each item with some useful details, such as a picture of what it looks like, its price, and even some nutritional information. Now, each of these items is rendered using a preview of the new to-do component from the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. In the app, I can update the quantities of certain items, or when I'm ready to go shopping, I can see where each item is located in the store and check things off as I pick them up. And my list and to-do will stay in sync with the app thanks to the to-do APIs. So as you can see here in my code, I'm using the MGT to-do component with some custom templating to render each item the way it looks in the app.
Under the hood, as I update or check off things in my list in the Contosa Foods app, the to-do component is doing all of the work for me to make requests to get and update the data using the new to-do APIs. Finally, I'm going to talk about what's new in Conversations and Microsoft Teams. Now, messaging and virtual meetings have taken a central role in a lot of our lives, and Microsoft Teams enables you to stay connected. Now, Microsoft Graph has a number of new capabilities in the Teams APIs that helps you extend Teams for greater productivity and collaboration. So generally available, we now have the capability to send channel messages, get the files folder for a channel, install Teams apps for users, as well as the Shifts API. And in preview, we now have the capabilities to read channel messages, send activity feed notifications, as well as the ability to grant resource-specific consent to specific Teams. So now that we're working remotely, imagine you're attending offsite or training that requires attendees to break off from a larger meeting into smaller discussion groups. Now that we're working remotely, imagine that you're attending an offsite or a training event that requires you to break off from the larger group into small discussion groups. So with this next step, I'm going to show you how with the Teams APIs, you can easily build a solution that enables you to do that. So Megan and Alex are both attending a Microsoft Graph training event and Megan is the moderator, and Alex is an attendee. So they're both going to join the call. Now, Megan, as the moderator, wants the attendees to be able to split up into small groups to discuss specific topics or questions. So she's going to use this moderator app, which is a React app built using the new Teams APIs and Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So as Megan, I can choose the event, create groups with the number of people I want in each. And when I click Create Breakout, the app is going to use the Teams APIs to create a new team for the event and a channel for each of the breakout groups with the right people in each. So as Megan, I'm also going to send a new online meeting to each channel. You can see that Alex just received a notification in his activity feed that he was added to the team. And then another one for a channel message that was sent with the meeting link for the breakout group. So this uses the new post to activity feed and send channel message APIs. Now, Alex can click to join the meeting, and he's now in a separate meeting with just a smaller group. And with just one click of a button, he can super easily switch back and forth between the main event and the smaller meeting. This is just one example of how you can use Teams APIs to integrate your own apps with Microsoft Teams to enhance your collaboration. If you want to learn how to build this app with the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, our team will be live coding it on the Microsoft Developer Twitch live stream during build. So make sure to check that out. So we just ran through a lot of new APIs and features, but the demos and examples we showed cover only a tiny portion of what's new on Microsoft Graph and how you can use Microsoft Graph to extend or build new Microsoft 365 experiences. So integrating with Microsoft Graph is a great opportunity as it provides access to millions of Microsoft 365 users with over 5,000 APIs, and these numbers are constantly growing. So here's a full list of the new data that's available on Microsoft Graph as of build 2020. Vincent and I also showed you a bunch of new tools such as the new Graph Explorer, the PowerShell modules, and the Microsoft Graph Toolkit, but we also have new improvements to our SDKs, and we have a lot of other developer tools and resources available. To find more information on anything that we covered in this session and more, you just need to remember graph.microsoft.com. And to wrap up, just a reminder that we want to hear what you want to see on Microsoft Graph, and microsoftgraph.uservoice.com is where we're listening. And here are some ways to get connected with us to stay up to date on all things Microsoft 365 developer. Thanks for watching. Vincent, it's been a pleasure presenting with you. Oh, no, the pleasure was all mine. That's it. Stay safe. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>